Well, good evening and welcome to our service of Holy Communion for Ascension Day, where we remember how Christ left this earth and returned to God the Father, ascending to heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers. My name is Steve Turville and it's my privilege to be leading the service this evening. If you'd like to have some bread and wine ready for later on for communion, please do so, but it's not necessary. I mean, if we believe and trust in Jesus Christ, then we are always in communion with each other and God through the Holy Spirit who dwells in our hearts. Today also importantly marks the beginning of a wave of prayer around the world that our families, our friends, our neighbours, our nation will come to know Jesus Christ and that God's kingdom will come in all of their lives. And the plan too is that we'll be finished by eight o'clock so we'll all be able to go outside and clap our key workers as usual. So let's now be quiet for a few moments as we come to our prayers of confession. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us draw near with a true and repentant heart and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. When I say, Lord, be merciful, please respond by saying, forgive us our sin. Merciful Father, we are sorry that we have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sins. We are sorry that we have seen the mistreatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sins. We are sorry that we have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sins. We are sorry that we have failed to share the good news of Christ with others. Lord, be merciful forgive us our sins. We are sorry that we have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful, forgive us our sins. May God our Father forgive us our, forgive us our sins and bring us to the fellowship of his table with his saints forever. Amen. The Bible reading is from Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria 
and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Luke, the Gospel writer, begins part two of his Gospel, the book of Acts, with an ending, the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. After his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his chosen apostles over 40 days, proving to them that he was truly alive and speaking to them about the kingdom of God. What a time those 40 days must have been for the apostles as, a, as memories of their three years with Jesus came back into their minds. The way he lived. What an amazing life, serving the poor, the lepers, the blind, the lame, the sick, the weak, the excluded, his teaching, the crowds, thousands of people coming to him from far and wide to hang on his every word, his miracles, how the crowds came after him for more, his parables that none of them understood, his humility, and his strength as he stood up to the Pharisees and the religious hypocrites. Also his sternness when they tried to stop the children coming to him, or when Peter tried to dissuade him he didn't need to die. And yes, then, his death. The betrayal, the fists, the agony, the whip, the thorns, the cross, the spear, and then the tomb, their bewilderment and their confusion, their utter despair. But then their amazement, their unbelief, and finally their joy. Jesus reminded them over those 40 days of all they needed to know, then led them to Bethany, familiar Bethany, the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Wait in Jerusalem, he had said. Wait for the Holy Spirit, and then you'll see. And then he left them to take his place in the kingdom of heaven, reunited with God the Father, enthroned as King of kings and Lord of lords, where still he intercedes on our behalf, still works for our good. I've often wondered why this ten days between Ascension and Pentecost doesn't have a season of its own in the church calendar. Maybe it's just too short. The other two seasons of waiting and preparation, Advent and Lent, are much longer. Advent lasts between three and four weeks where we prepare for the celebration of Christ's first coming into the world, whilst looking forward to his second coming. Lent lasts six and a bit weeks, where we prepare for the celebration of Christ's victory over sin and death on our behalf, whilst remembering the suffering he went through to win that victory. But these ten days between Ascension and Pentecost should be just as full of anticipation, surely just as significant. The coming Holy Spirit would be the power to drive the church into the world and around the world. That same Holy Spirit who dwells now in the hearts of every Christian, uniting us with God and with each other. There's a saying, before talking to people about God, talk to God about people. We should pray for the people before we say anything to the people. And so it seems entirely appropriate that this season of preparation and waiting has become a season of prayer for our loved ones, for our neighbours, for our nation and for our world to come to know the saving love of Jesus Christ. Called Thy Kingdom Come, 
During this 11 days of prayer, churches of different denominations all over the world are once more joining together in prayer for the world, praying for God's kingdom to come in the lives of those we love and in the lives of those we don't love. And this year, while we are self-isolated, socially distanced, locked down, like the first disciples awaiting the coming Holy Spirit, aware of the danger outside, but praying in their isolation, we are called to prepare and to pray for God's kingdom to come. Now I hope you've been able to print a prayer diary that gives you some suggestions of what to pray for each day. If you haven't, you can download it from St. Mary's Wargrave website. There's also a daily prayer for the COVID crisis. So can I encourage you to print a prayer diary Write on it the names of your loved ones, and over the next 11 days, let's pray together. Let's pray for God's kingdom to come in the lives of those we love, in the lives of our neighbours, in the life of our nation and our world. Let's pray now. Let us pray. God of our salvation, hope of all the earth. When I say, we pray, will you respond, your kingdom come. That the world may know Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace. We pray, your kingdom come that the Church may be generous in giving, faithful in serving, bold in proclaiming. We pray, your kingdom come, that all who are suffering in any way through the effects of the global pandemic will know the consolation of Christ. We pray, your kingdom come, that all who suffer or serve for the gospel, may know the comfort and glory of Christ. We pray, your kingdom come. That our families, our friends, our neighbours may come to know Jesus. We pray, your kingdom come. That we may be steadfast in prayer and effective witnesses of his love. We pray, your kingdom come. That the day will soon come, when every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We pray, your kingdom come. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to bring the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your Spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we come to uh, Holy Communion and I'm going to be using the, um, the, the order of service we would usually use at 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning from the Book of Common Prayer. So let us pray. Almighty God, we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body. 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, He gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which was given for you for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The blood of Christ, which was shed for thee. Preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, and we'll use the traditional version. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who raised Jesus from the dead, and exalted him to your right hand on high, may we know your resurrection power in our daily lives and look with hope to that day when we shall see you face to face and share in your glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. May Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love, this day and for evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.